Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on modeling systems with multi-level converters in MATLAB and Simulink. My name is Graham Dudgeon, I am an industry manager at MathWorks. We are going to be looking at a number of challenges associated with building systems with multi-level converters today and we're going to start by looking at the converter itself and how we can build models of multi-level converters programmatically from the base components. Also, once we have the system, the multi-level converter in a system model, how can we use configurable subsystems to switch between different converter architectures in a very convenient way? We will also be looking at the analysis of harmonic signatures to verify the correctness of the models. So any power electronic architecture with a certain switching pattern has a very well-defined harmonic signature. And so we'll see how we can use FFT analysis to verify the correctness. We'll then look at two particular examples of the use of multi-level converters. The first is HVDC power transfer, so a sending end and a receiving end, and how you can test the operational scenarios associated with just transferring power from one AC network to another AC network. And we'll also look at PMSM generator control as well. And the use case there could be connection of wind turbines, type 4 wind turbines, or motor drives. So basically any, any type of drive system in which you're looking to control through the use of a multi-level converter. And we'll also be looking at the automation of, of report generation to record the output of simulation studies. And bringing the automated aspect into testing simulations, testing scenarios, and then reporting automatically is a value add as well. So why do we want to build models of multi-level converters programmatically? It's quite simple, the reason, and it's to do with scale. Developing a large model manually is time consuming, and it does require considerable effort to verify the correctness of the topology, of the components, and also the parameters. So doing it manually, a very time consuming process, which, because we are all human beings, is prone to error. So bringing in a programmatic method for doing this can save us considerable time and also improve the quality as well, which means we get to a power converter model faster than we otherwise would and with an increased level of confidence that this converter is correct. The way we do this is to write a MATLAB script that can automate the creation of the model. We can do this because Simulink components are objects that can be manipulated programmatically from MATLAB. So I'm going to show you some code in a moment, but you'll see functions such as add block and add line for creating the topology, and also get and set functions for manipulating the parameters. So let's go into MATLAB and take a look at this. So the first thing we have is really just a, a template. So this is positive arm of one phase, basically a subsystem. And let me show you underneath at the moment, there's nothing here. We have positive and negative port with no components. And we also have a signal transfer set up as well, but nothing yet here. So when the modulation wave comes in, we're then going to separate it out. Basically a blank canvas. I've written a script which basically you can type in the number of cells and it will populate that canvas, that template, with the correct number of cells. It will connect them and it will um, make sure that the signaling is correct as well. I won't show you the full script but let's just look for certain functions add block. It's taking a cell from MMC cell IGBT. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Places it in the, the model. Modifies position. And we should also see add line as well for connecting up the cells. So let's just run this. It's going to change the name as well once it's done. I've chosen 48 cells. So there we go, it's resaved as MMC48IGBT. If I now look under the mask, 
there we see that we have 48 cells. I'll just go to the bottom. 48 cells configured correctly with the correct signaling. So let's take a look at the, the individual cell. Just close this down. So the individual cell is just uh, two switches. Then this is a universal bridge here, and it's a single arm. So a single arm IGPT with um, anti-parallel diodes, two devices there with the capacitor. So basically we have the the individual component. So once we have the the component with the 48 cells, so positive this is the positive arm, it's basically duplicated for the negative arm. So so let's quickly go to a full converter. I'm just bringing up a library here where I've created a library with different numbers of cells. And let's just give this a moment to load up and then we'll look under one of those. So I'm just moving one of the cells there, or one of the, the components, so I can unlock the library so we can take a look underneath. So you see the positive and negative arms for each phase here, three phase device. So these are what we automatically generate. And then we can just cut and paste those blocks in. No, no changes required other than the name and just cut and paste those in. You could go a stage further in the automatic build and also automatically build these full converters if you wish, but I chose just to do a, a cut and paste. We also have the PWM generator here. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. So in the library I just showed you, you may have noticed a configurable subsystem. We'll go back to that in just a second. But we use this to switch between different converter architectures. The reason we do that is different converter topologies can be easily compared in the same system model. So the way that we do this is we place each of those different converter architectures in a library and use a configurable subsystem to control access to each topology. We can also select topology or architecture programmatically as well using the configurable subsystems and we'll, we'll see that as well in just a moment. So if I go back to the library then we see we have a configurable subsystem. If I double click on this it lists the components you have in the library and you can select them as members. Close this down. You may have noticed this AVG MMC, this is an average MMC. I'd just like to talk about that for a second. I'll actually look under the mask. So this block uses a average voltage source converter. So what it's doing is it's not modeling the physical switching of the components. But what we do is we can generate the waveforms with the harmonic signature we expect to see and feed those directly in as the reference and it will duplicate those harmonic signatures and waveforms at the terminals. So we can maintain some harmonic content but we are not modeling the physics of the actual devices and we are not modeling the switching pattern in its entirety either. But this can be a very useful construct for doing very rapid assessment with some initial indications of what the harmonic signatures are going to be. But then you would move to the fully detailed model to verify that your architecture and your switching patterns are correct. So let's talk a little bit more about the switching patterns. This is a test harness I've put together for the pulse width modulation. I'm going to be testing a 6 cell PWM and also 48 cell just for illustrative purposes with a 600 Hz carrier frequency for each cell. 
with a 60 Hz modulation wave. So with these constructs, so for the 48 cells, for a 60 Hz modulation and a 600 Hz carrier frequency, so we expect to see the 480th harmonic, in this case being the first significant harmonic. And with six cells, we would expect to see 6 times 10, which is the 60th harmonic, being the first significant harmonic. So looking under the mask here, what I've done is I've set up the pulse width modulation generator. And if I look under the mask here, it's all vectorized. So basically this is the generator. This creates the triangular waveform, the carrier wave. The number of cells and the frequency are used to determine what the phase shifts should be of each triangular waveform. And then we do simple pulsing. So this construct does not change. All we change is the number of cells and the carrier frequency. That's all we need to do with this construct. Now, on the physical device, the three output signals would be being fed to each arm. What I'm doing here is I'm picking off just the positive arm signals and summing them. Because what this will do is it will construct the waveform that we we would expect to see on the physical device or, or on the physical simulation. And so this is a quick test for us to test the pulse width modulation signals and to verify the correctness of the harmonics that we're seeing. So let's run this. This is the six cell waveform. So this, again, is not the PWM pulses. It's the summation of the positive arm pulses in order to construct what we would expect to see at the output terminals of the physical converter. Let's just do a little bit of zooming in. Six cells, so we'd expect to see six steps, which we see, and we also see the high frequency switching going on. So this visually is looking fine. We'll verify it properly in a second. Let's go to the 48. To zoom in, and we see there, if you care to count those, you would count 48. Visually, this is looking good, but we need to quantify this. So double click on the power GUI, go to FFT analysis, And what I'm doing here is I'm going to analyze each waveform to verify the harmonics. Now, for the 6 cell, with a 600 hertz carrier on a 60 hertz modulation, 6 times 10, 60th harmonic. That's what we expect to see as our first significant harmonic. So I've just ran the FFT down here. Let's bring the frequency down a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to 5,000. So 60th harmonic is the first significant harmonic with the sidebands. That's what we expect to see. I can push up the frequency a little bit. Let's make it 8,000. Next bunch is the 120th harmonic. So this is mirrored around 60th harmonic. We see symmetry there. This is looking good total harmonic distortion of 18%. So that gives us some information as well before we've even done a physical simulation of the amount of harmonic distortion we expect to see. Now well, let's look at the 48. This is the 48 cell waveform. So we need to go to up to the at least the 480th harmonic. I'm just going to go to MATLAB quickly just to do a quick calculation. 480 times 60, 28,000, I want to go up to, say, 50,000 so we can get a good look at this display. And there we go, 480th harmonic with the sidebands. So 2.36%, as we expect, the harmonics are attenuated. 480th harmonic, sidebanded and symmetrical, this is all looking pretty good. We could do some further verification, but this is a good first step in verifying at least that the pulse width modulation is showing the harmonic characteristics we expect. Now with that, we need to go and do some testing. So I have a test harness 
where I can bring in the physical models of the converters. So here we go, here's the harness, just a DC supply with the converter and just RL loads. And I'm just putting in three phase modulation. Nothing fancy here. 60 hertz, three phase. So let's talk now about the solver and the time step that you might wish to use here. I would recommend with power electronic systems that you use fixed step discrete. Make your full system discrete. Discretize the power system model using configure, basically the configurations, the configure parameters and select discrete. Then the question becomes what time step do you use? So this comes down to your architecture. If I was doing a 48 cell, I know the first significant harmonics are 480. So 480 is harmonic times 60. And then just as a rule of thumb, go a factor of 10 above that. So we really want to have a time step which is 288,000 hertz. Just do one over that. 3.4, 3.5 microseconds as your step time. So I would just choose 2 microseconds in this case. So we can modify that step time based on the harmonics we are expecting to see. So 2 microseconds. We have a configurable subsystem. We can choose we can manually select through block choice. So what I done there was right click, block choice, and then we have access. Now the difference between the IGBT and the non-IGBT versions is I'm using ideal switches for the others. Or I can select IGBTs, you can you can basically do whatever you want for your investigations. 12 cell IGBT has been selected, let's just run it. So now it's running, we can take a look at the voltage. So there we go. So this is the actual terminal voltage of the converter for the physical device. It's a, it's a 12 cell system, I can visually see that, I can see the high frequency switching in there as well, so visually it looks good. Let's verify FFT analysis. I'm going to bring the start time just down a little bit. FFT, then display. I'm going to bring the, the frequency down a little bit so we can see it more clearly. But there we go, 120th harmonic, which is what we expect to see for the 12 cell with 600 hertz on each cell for a 60 hertz modulation. So, so we verified that. Now, if we want to test each one, we could manually select block choice and go through each one at a time, record the output, but this is one of these cases where it makes more sense to do this programmatically. Now, if I just bring up a MATLAB script, and so this is a script I wrote to basically check each of the, the different configurations. So you do this by using find system command to get a handle to the configurable subsystem. And then I can start changing programmatically the block choice using the set command. Then simulate the model, get the figures out, and then look at the FFT. And you can see here, 6 cell, 12 cell, 24 cell, 48 cell. All programmatic. You can see double ampersands here, I'm using them for different sections but also for reporting it's very valuable to have the double ampersands because it brings out different section titles which are hyperlinked. So this is my script to automate the testing of each of those configurations. I'm not going to run it here because it takes some time because we're going through each of the models and going to the detailed models as well but I ran it earlier. Let's take a look at the report. So this is what you get out using the publish command Hyperlinked, I could look at 48 cell. So there's the 48 cell version. 2.4% total harmonic distortion. I see the harmonic signature there. There's the 24 cell. The 12 cell. 
and the sixth cell. So automating programmatically a very powerful technique for testing your architectures and then automated reporting to then provide your results to your colleagues and just in general document your results so you have an audit trail. So let's now move on to system considerations and what I have here is a simple control scheme set up for power transfer. I have a sending end and a receiving end and the controllers are very simple in this case. I've got a phase lock loop to pull out the clean sinusoids and I'm controlling direct axis current for power transfer and I'm also controlling power factor to be 1 in this case as well. That's for the sending end. For the receiving end I'm controlling DC voltage and also power factor of the AC side of the, the receiving end. Very basic control. What this does is it allows us to investigate the operation of this system, which in this case is an HVDC system. And I'll run this. And then we can look at the results. So in the top here we have the voltage and on the bottom we have the current and also what's showing on the current response the red line is the reference current that's being commanded. So that's going to change as the simulation progresses as we can see here. So we can see that we're tracking the current. It's a reasonable control system. I can visually see it's, it's moving around a little bit before it settles down. I would spend more time on this if I was doing it properly but this is giving us a very quick, rough and ready indication that power transfer control is basically being set up and with a bit more tuning we'd get a good system in place. Because we're using the configurable subsystems I've just used 12 cell at one side at the sending end, 6 cell at the receiving end. That can be changed when it's done we can go to FFT analysis and again just confirm that we're seeing what we expect to see 120th harmonic on the sending end and 60th harmonic on the receiving end. There we go. So we can verify. We should always be doing this as we go. Verifying the correctness of the harmonic signatures that we're seeing. I'll close this down and then we'll move to the final model we're going to be looking at today which is permanent magnet. Let me select the correct model. So all I'm doing now is is one side. This this could be an HVDC system. So the scenario here could be that you have a type 4 wind farm, in this case permanent magnet, full power conversion. That's one possible scenario. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not saying that this is the the only way to do this, but it's an example showing how we do a different type of control scheme. We're just looking at one end and we're going to make that permanent magnet synchronous machine generate. I've got different torque levels which I'm going to change as this simulation progresses and I've basically done vector control in this case to control speed against the reference. Torque will then take care of itself because of the inner control loop for current. So vector control of permanent magnet synchronous machine which in this case is generating. So let's run this. And you'll notice I'm using the average MMC in this case. So I've configured it to replicate the, the effect of a 48 cell MMC. If we look at the voltage, then we can visually see that we're getting that harmonic 
overlaid onto that voltage output. But because we're using an average value converter, we're able to simulate this much faster because it's not simulating each cell in this converter. So simulation overhead has been diminished. What we are losing in this is we're losing the, the full physical system, of course. We're losing the interaction there and then the additional physics as a consequence of, of that architecture. This is one way of doing a very quick assessment of what a specific architecture might look like on a system before you then go down the path of more detailed simulation. So let's just take a look at some of the the results. So speed tracking. Purple is the reference, yellow is achieved, so we've actually overshot. So that would be something I would be looking to improve there. Electromagnetic torque, you can see there, is basically ramping down in generation mode, so it's generating just a very simplistic test harness, which allows me to do some investigation of how the system's behaving. And that's the, the terminal voltage, we've seen that already. And I can also look at the, the current, DC current in this case, and voltage, which is constant. It's an ideal voltage source in this particular case. Let me just change this block choice. Let's just go to six cell. So this is a full physical model now. It's not the average version. It'll take slightly longer to simulate even the six cell. It will still be fairly rapid in this particular case. So there we go. We can see the impact there of moving to the six pulse. And again, we do some verification. See some, actually when you zoom in there, actually it's settling down a little bit there, we can see some dissymmetry appearing here. Dissymmetry, is that a word? Non-symmetry, perhaps, is a better term there. But we can see some effects, which we may want to look at further as part of a, a full assessment here. So let's go back to the slides now. So in summary, we have looked at the techniques that we can bring to bear for modeling, simulating, and verifying system models that have multi-level converters. We've seen how to build models of multi-level converters programmatically from the base components. We have seen how to use configurable subsystems to switch between different converter architectures and also how to do this switch programmatically as well. We have looked at analyzing the harmonic signatures to verify the correctness of the models. Every power electronic architecture with a given switching pattern has a very well defined harmonic signature. And so we should be looking at these harmonic signatures at each step to be sure that our model is going in the correct direction and that we can verify it. We've also looked at two different systems, HVDC power transfer and permanent magnet synchronous machine generator control, just to drop these converters into systems and look at the feedback control necessary to achieve some operational objective. And we also saw an automated report generation example where we looked at each of the converter architectures in the test harness, but you could roll this type of automated reporting out to any of your studies. And as you all know, we we have to simulate more and more now. We have to do more scenarios, more operational conditions, more variability comes into play as well. And really, as we're doing hundreds or thousands of different simulations on a given task, then the automated aspect of both running the simulations and then reporting on them is a very strong value add. Thank you for listening today. If you have questions you would like to ask, please email the presenters at webinars at mathworks.com. Include the webinar title and date in your email. There are also other recorded webinars you can view in MathWorks on the site indicated. Also, please visit MATLAB Central. You will find in MATLAB Central a, a repository of MATLAB scripts, Simulink models that our user community have written and you can do a search for your particular area and, and take a look at the content that is available.
So thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.